You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Uh, and so the results that we released this morning are the results from that additional infill till sampling program completed in June. Uh, and we're very excited to say that, you know, we, we believe we've tracked down and, and really narrowed down the area where a possible bedrock source could be of that till material. I'm Bill Powers. This is MSE. Thanks for tuning in. I'm chatting today with one of our sponsors, President and CEO Cameron Teamstra of Targa Exploration, a very prospective project up in Quebec. I'm also a shareholder. Cameron, welcome back onto the show. Uh, can you remind us what you're trying to accomplish at Openaka and also regarding uh, the new re results that you just released to the market, please? Uh, sure, Bill. And thanks for having me back on here. I know it's been a little while since we last spoke. Um, so up at Alpenaka, um, you know, originally we acquired that project looking for its lithium prospectivity. Uh, we did a big regional scale till sampling program there last year. Uh, till sampling involves sampling the material that sits on top of bedrock that was left there uh, by the glaciers during the last ice age. So these big, thick, one to two kilometer thick glaciers uh, swept over pretty much all of Canada uh, 10 to 15,000 years ago. Uh, scraped up the bedrock uh, as they went because they were so every heavy and pulver pulverized that material down um, to sort of sand and gravel and boulders and things like that. And that material is what's sort of left sitting on top of the bedrock. And it gives us clues to um, what, be, might, what might be contained in the bedrock uh, further up the ice in the direction that the glaciers came from. Uh, so last year we did a big regional scale uh, sampling program of the steel material at Alpenaka. And what we found there last year was a big sort of, at that time, about a five kilometer by four kilometer size uh, gold anomaly in the till material. And so our goals this year were to return to Apanaka um, with a gold focus in mind and no longer a lithium focus there uh, and actually conduct a gold exploration program on that, um, try to track down uh, the source of the bedrock um, where this till anomaly is coming from. And so we had to go in and we did some additional till sampling, uh, continuing to move up, up ice. And we also did some infill till sampling at a much tighter grid spacing than the regional scale sampling we did last year. Uh, and so the results that we released this morning are the results from that additional infill till sampling program completed in June. Uh, and we're very excited to say that, you know, we, we believe we've tracked down and, and really narrowed down the area where a possible bedrock source could be of that till material. And so not only were we sampling the fine fraction of the till that we sent to a lab for an assay, um, in June, we also took what are called uh, heavy mineral concentrate samples. Uh, so it's again, it's a sample of the till material, but it's a much larger sample, typically around uh, 10, 10 kilos or a little over 20 pounds per sample. Uh, we send that to a specialized lab uh, in Ottawa, Canada called uh, ODM. And what they do is they um, basically separate that sample out by the gravity fraction. So we take the densest material from that uh, and analyze that under a microscope and actually look for individual grains of gold. And so they count those grains and then they also analyze the grains for their shape. And their shape can help us um, learn a little bit about maybe how far that gold particle has traveled. So if you think in terms of placer gold in a river, it's usually very, very smooth looking and very rounded because it's tumbled along and traveled a long distance. Um, if we start to see gold grains that are much more pristine looking with sharper, more angular edges, that indicates that the travel distance has been much shorter. And so we we, we not only sampled the fine fraction till, we also did this HMC sampling as well. Uh, and both the results from the HMC sampling um, line up with the, with the other till sampling that we did as well, sort of indicating a roughly seven kilometer long uh, trend line that we're seeing uh, and down ice from that is where we start to see um, the elevated gold anomaly in the five fraction tills but also the uh, higher counts of gold from that hmc sampling as well so you've had some success with the sampling the till samplings but you were hoping for outcropping of the bedrock and uh doesn't look like we found that did it did we um not yet unfortunately it looks like we might have sent our geology team on a bit of a wild goose chase uh, up in June, we were anticipating the the bedrock source to be about four or five kilometers uh, further to the northeast, sort of up ice, uh, where we were seeing an arsenic trend continue in the till. Uh, and we did see a bit of a, a pretty strong correlation between gold and arsenic uh, in the sampling we did last year, and we were expecting that to continue. So uh, most of the prospecting work that our, our small geology team team did in June uh, was focused in an area that uh, now looks like it's about four or five kilometers away from where we now believe a bedrock source to be located. So uh, we didn't get any hits on the on the hard rock gold up in that early area for the bedrock and the boulder samples that we uh, we took, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to be returning to um, you know the newly identified trend with a much bigger geology team in just a couple of weeks. So are you going to are you going to be doing more of the same sampling just in this uh, area that you've identified? Uh, so we're done with the fine fraction uh, till sampling. We've got uh, you know a really good target um, from that. I don't think doing a higher density of sampling will will improve that at all. 
Uh, we will do some additional HMC samples, probably at least a uh, hundred of those because uh, the grid spacing we did in June was about 1000 by 500 meters. So really broad space sampling. So we're going to tighten that up and, and do probably about 500 meters by 250 meter grid, um, sort of right along that trend line to look for additional gold grains and really track down where in that seven kilometers is maybe the most likely you know, location to find something that's a little higher grade. I mean, it is pretty evident that we have a gold system of some kind along that trend that is consistently shedding gold into the till. It's just a matter of getting down there and finding out, you know, what sort of gold system that is, uh, what the grade or tenure might be, uh, how consistent that might be. So we, we, there's a lot of unknowns still in terms of what's out there, but we're pretty confident there is some sort of gold system out there. Uh, and so our geology team will be, like you said, looking for the bedrock source, looking for mineralized boulders. Um, you know, certainly golden bedrock will be, you know, the the slam dunk of, of, of the September program if we can accomplish that. Um, but uh, you know, even having mineralized boulders with gold in them will tell us a lot in terms of you know what sort of geology is actually hosting the gold here. And if you don't find uh, the outcropping gold in bedrock, would that mean that the proposed or best case scenario that you laid out before of a winter drill program, would that not occur? Or could you possibly even engage in a winter drill program even if you don't find the bedrock outcropping? Uh, even without bedrock outcropping, we can still you know do a few other things in terms of identifying drill targets. Uh, it would likely mean some um, some additional some some geophysics work in the winter. Uh, so that could be some magnetometer work. Uh, could be some VLF surveying as well, either airborne or on the ground. Uh, both of which can be done uh, in the winter season. So we'd likely do that first uh, to help us really hone in on this trend line to identify you know some some targets that way. Um, but that could still could lead to a drill program, you know, at some point, you know, in the first half of 2025, whether that's in the winter or it's in the spring, um, you know, that's certainly still, still our goal here for, for up in is to be drilling there next year. Is your team using augers where you might use like even a 15 foot auger that goes down through the till hoping to hit bedrock? Are you employing any of those strategies? Um, not for the work that we're doing in September, but we are looking at some other options in terms of, you know, how to get through the till quickly to take even just a simple bedrock sample. There's a few different, you know, pieces of mobile drilling equipment that you can, that you can do for that, that can help you kind of get through the till just to kind of give you a couple inch piece of the bedrock, whether that's a piece of core or some chips, um, just to help you better understand the geology because no one's explored on this project before for anything until, until we stepped foot on it last year in September. Um, you know, so to advance in just 12 months from, uh, a uh, bunch of ground that no one's really been to before to having this really nice gold target, I think is great progress in 12 months. Um, but yeah, we do still need to understand the the local geology a lot better because we have very little sort of pieces of information from you know regional mapping that the government surveyors have done in the past. Norland vended you this project. You own 100% of it. They are also the project operators as specialists in gold till anomalies. Uh, any thoughts that you can share that they told you that's not in the press release? Uh, I mean, they're very excited about um, you know about what they've what they've seen here, uh, particularly given the the length of the trend and the consistency of seeing gold shedding into it along that that long length. I mean, talking to them, they say, look, you know, big deposits are found on big trends. You know, you need something that's at least two to three kilometers in size for a larger scale, you know, say open pit style deposit. Um, the fact that we have you know roughly seven kilometers of of, of land that seems to be consistently shedding gold. Uh, into the system here, you know, signals to us that there could be a lot of potential for uh, an extensive gold system. Um, in terms of the the grades that we're seeing in the till and the number of gold grain counts we're seeing per sample, um, I mean, they're not exactly through the work through the roof compared to maybe one of the other projects that Kennelands worked on in the past, particularly their Frotet discovery with Sumitomo, where they were seeing you know more elevated values in the till and higher numbers of grain counts. But that's a very high grade deposit, and there are seven stacked you know, parallel mineralized vein systems there that the ice traveled perfectly perpendicular to to collect up all of that gold that's exposed at bedrock surface uh to, to you know basically create a much more um sort of higher grade red carpet if you will of a till anomaly leading up to leading up to that deposit but every deposit is going to be different in terms of how it sheds gold into a glacier system it's dependent on the deposit type the deposit grade um, what part of the deposit's actually exposed at the bedrock surface uh, and the orientation of that exposure relative to the direction of the ice flow. So is the ice traveling over a very long, you know, parallel section of the of the deposit picking up gold along the way, or is it crossing it perpendicular and only crossing, you know, maybe a hundred meters of exposure versus, you know, kilometers of exposure. Uh, and so those things can all result in a different sort of till anomaly. And uh, we've looked at a few other projects 
uh, as well. And we've seen, you know, for example, the the board in Lake Mine, that's a Newmont project. I think it's at least 5 million ounces of gold in Ontario. Um, we looked at the HMCD sampling just down ice from that. And the sort of gold grain counts that they're getting from that huge deposit is very, very similar to the gold grain counts that we're seeing in our HMC samples as well. Um, so we don't need uh, hundreds of gold grains in an HMC sample to indicate a gold deposit. Um, certainly, you know, much lower grades can can also indicate large gold deposits as well. It's just really dependent on those other factors and um, things like the till depth as well. The deeper the till, uh, the more dilute your gold is going to be with other till material that was deposited. Um, so the lower grades you're going to see in the till samples, again, doesn't necessarily mean you have a, a low grade gold deposit next door. So it was encouraging that you found the pristine, non-pervasively eroded uh, gold grains that it seems to indicate that the, the gold bedrock source is nearby. However, is there a simple scientific explanation which could explain finding the pristine gold grains while the source of that gold grain may not be nearby? Uh, I don't think that's likely the case. I mean, um, often you, you can still get sort of post-glacier movement of material on the surface. Um, if there were like post-glacial lakes and river systems flowing over the land, but things like that that could transport the material would likely also round those gold grains as well. And so you'd expect if they were transported sort of post-glaciation and moved in a different direction, uh, that they would experience more weathering, more rounding. Um, so really seeing like crispy, pristine gold grains is really a strong indication that that material has not moved far. So we've been talking about your seven kilometer anomaly that you've laid out, but you also talked about an Eastern anomaly. Uh, what's the update there on the project? Um, so last year, the, the original regional till sampling program that we did identified both our large central anomaly that we've just been talking about, but also a smaller one to the east uh, that had slightly higher grades in the till, but it looked like a much smaller anomaly. So we did do some additional uh, infill till sampling across that, uh, as well as some HMC sampling. And we do think that we've sort of isolated where that anomaly could be coming from as well. Um, but the sort of size of that system looks much, much smaller than our central system, uh, albeit potentially higher grades. So we did have one HMC sample um, from that uh, from that anomaly that was actually quite high. Um, the highest in terms of gold grain counts that we got on the project in June uh, was actually from there. There was something like 98 gold grains there, and I think almost all of them were pristine, about maybe 95% of them were pristine. So um, a nice little, little target there, but it's sort of a point target. The other HMC samples around didn't really carry any sort of anomalous gold counts. Um, so whatever's there does look like it's pretty, pretty isolated and small. Uh, and that's why we're really going to be focused on on the uh, on the central part, uh, the central anomaly when we go back in September, because there we're seeing consistently elevated gold grain counts across a, a much larger area. Looking over your financials at the end of June 30th, you had total assets uh, almost 2.5 million Canadian and working capital of 1.25. So you're funded for the field program, but perhaps for the diamond drilling, whenever that occurs, you will need to get recapitalized. That's right. Our, our program in June, we spent roughly sort of 1. Uh, 1.1, 1.2 million on that program. Uh, in terms of what we're going to do going back in September, our budget for that is around 350 to 400,000. Uh, and we are fully funded for that program in September. Um, certainly any, you know, big drill program in the future next year will need, will need financing for that. And what would be some of the means in which you might accomplish that? Are you going to use any of the, the benefits of being in Quebec with uh, flow through funds and such? Yeah, in terms of tax benefits, Quebec is certainly the the best place to be. Um, you know, even within Canada, it does have higher higher benefits on the on the flow through flow through and charity flow through programs. Um, so we'd likely be utilizing you know those same programs that we've used to raise capital for uh, for exploration before in Quebec. Um, you know, early this spring when we raised the money for this program, we just completed. Um, we got something like a seventy five percent premium on the charity flow through relative to the hard dollar pricing. So we raised hard dollar units at ten cents and the charity flow through units at seventeen and a half. Uh, now that there has been some, you know, changes to the uh, capital gains tax here in Canada, I think those premiums have come down a little bit, but they're still quite favorable. Uh, so we would definitely make as much use as possible as we can in those programs for, for funding exploration going forward. And I was one of those hard dollar at 10 cent investors, but today the shares are at 6.5 cents per share. So that's 35% below where I invested. Would you say that's some of your lithium speculators uh, exiting the stock? I imagine that might be the case. I mean, you know, you knew, knew before we made this uh, gold anomaly discovery that we were solely lithium focused, and it's been a pretty, um, pretty beat up market for for the lithium space over the last sort of twelve and eighteen months here. Um, you know, so we've kind of still been associated with uh, with the lithium space, but we've been trying to completely rebrand rebrand as as a gold focused explorer as we uh, as we you know pretty much put all of our chips in on on Apinaka. 
Uh, in terms of some selling, I mean, we did have free trade direct free trade dates come up uh, earlier this summer from our financing in the spring. Um, so there's some more paper that was uh, available on the market from that. Uh, and I imagine some of the selling may have been coming from some of the flow-through funds themselves that we raised funds with uh, with last year as well. Um, not the charity flow-through funds, but just the regular sort of Quebec flow-through funds. Um, those funds are not long-term investors. I mean, they're there really for for the tax benefits. And, uh, you know, they typically have a mandate to sort of offload their position over a 12-month period. And we raised money sort of this time last year with them and in December as well. Um, so I imagine some of that has probably been rolling off the books. Anything going on at the lithium projects? Um, we did do a very minimal amount of work on a few of our projects this year, really just to keep them in good standing. Again, we really want all the focus to be on the gold potential at Opanaka. Uh, we did do just some some basic prospecting work on a few projects that we have in Ontario, uh, most of which are road accessible, so we can do that cost effectively. Uh, we did do a small program up in our Prince Albert Lake project uh, as well earlier this year, just for about six or seven days with our geology team. Uh, they did some find some you know nice looking pegmatite indicators and uh, indicators of evolved pegmatites that could have some some lithium potential out there. But uh, we're really just trying to keep those in good standing while we look to see uh, what we do with the lithium portfolio going forward. So for the next press release, then, are you going to give more details about the field work in September or are you just will it just be the results of that field work? Uh, we will we will likely do a press release uh, sometime in the next week or two, uh, announcing the start of that program with details of that program. Uh, we're just working with our advisors this week and uh, and Kenner and the service providers to to kind of hammer out exactly the details of that program. But it will likely include uh, a much bigger geology team on the ground, probably five or six geologists, uh, really hammering that seven kilometer trend, uh, prospecting for outcrops and boulders, trying to get a much better understanding of what the local geology is down there, and and hopefully find some gold and bedrock and boulders as well. Um, we'll be increasing the density of the HMC sampling in that area uh, to look for more gold grain counts and try to identify, you know, if there's an area in this seven kilometer east west trend that is maybe more prospective than others based on the number of gold grains that we're seeing and, and whether or not they're pristine. Um, and we're considering maybe doing some some airborne geophysics as well, but we haven't uh, haven't quite settled on that yet. Uh, if we do, it will probably be some combination of MAG and BLS survey over the area. The company is Targa Exploration. They are a show sponsor. Website is targaexploration.com. Ticker symbol on the CSE is TEX. In Frankfurt, V6Y. And on the OTC QB, you can find it under the ticker TRGEF. Cam, thanks for coming on the show and providing this update. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for listening.